to the Tech Shack to another low quality video. Now I thought I'd do an updated video since it's been two months later on this access point and we have completed our Wi-Fi 6 upgrade. So we have this guy here that has replaced both the backhaul from the CPE that links from that big old CPE down there on the Tech Shack all the way back to the house. So there used to be a small CPE here that handled the backhaul. That's all been replaced by this. So this has replaced that CPE as well as three access points, right? The access point in the house, and then the ones that bookended each end of the house, because this thing does phenomenal coverage. Now, I want to address a couple things about that review or a couple of comments. First of all, was one comment that I completely hid, okay? Because if uh, you're gonna comment and you're gonna be rude and be demanding, at the very least, um, watch the entire video. Because what he complained about was in that video that I just mounted to a pole and went all the way out and saw how far it would drop and I, that's the only information I gave about range. When in fact, if you watch all the way into the conclusion, you could see where I showed the range and I did in fact say that that, was, that, that distance was from radial antennas. Max range, I would consider it reliable as a standalone access point, was at 1320 feet, which is about 403 meters or a quarter mile. At that distance, I was getting a reliable stable 45 megabit down with fair Wi-Fi signal strength on a Pixel 7a. At one, I have devices capable of miles of range, those are directional CPEs. To have a standard Wi-Fi access point with radial antennas getting over a quarter mile range is exceptional. The issue is, with that pole that I mounted it at, I only have clean line of sight that I could push all the way to the edge without hitting any barriers, any walls, any brush, so that it was just this clean, straight shot to give it the best chance it could was to go that direction. I did, in fact, test it off camera in all directions and confirmed I could go way past my property line on all the other directions, except for maybe that one because of how deep we own. This is kind of like a big rectangle. All right, so all the information that he asked for is literally in the slides at the end of that video and left a big, long paragraph complaining. I wish I would have screenshotted it. Everything was there. He literally must have just watched the section where I showed this the initial range testing and didn't go to the actual charts and conclusion at the end. And I do have everything timestamped, so he could have just skipped right to there and saw all the information he wanted. So instead of even replying, I just hit him from the channel. He can't comment because he didn't watch the entire video. And not only just didn't watch the video, but also was very rude and told me I had to make another video for him. So. Uh, another issue some people have had is with Starlink. Now, what I thought I had, I had mentioned, but maybe I just glossed over, is whenever you use Starlink and any of these access points, do not use their router. The router, I don't give a sh I don't care whether you have the Gen 1 or the Gen 3. They are terrible when it comes to any sort of IP configuration or anything like that. There is no lease times. So that router is absolutely terrible. Um, so just put it in pass-through mode, run any router that you want. Okay, and when linking these up, you can't just repeat your existing router's Wi-Fi. Your first one has to be hardwired, okay? Installation is not hardwired, but that's because I have a directional CPE sending a solid five gigahertz signal. That's good for miles, really, if you have two of them pointed at each other, they're rated for miles. So this is a very short distance for that. So it provides perfect backhaul and everything that I need for my 300-ish megabit um, Starlink. If you had gigabit speed, something faster, you definitely wouldn't want to run these in mesh mode at all, okay? And just because I showed that you can push these to a quarter mile, you don't want to mesh them out a quarter mile at a time. If you're jumping that much distance, you want to have two sets of CPEs. Okay, the CPE I'm pointing now, the 710, is like $50, $60, right? So a pair of those is 120 bucks. You can send a gigabit signal a mile. Okay, multiple miles if you just want a couple hundred megabits. So if you have a pair of those, you can send it as far as you need to go to auxiliary buildings and then have these at the auxiliary buildings for the actual Wi-Fi access. Okay, yes, these things have phenomenal range, but when you start putting them under load, you should not be like trying to daisy chain as many of these as possible. One should be at least hardwired, and then you should only mesh one off of that one. Maybe two if you're having low traffic off of the second one. Okay, so basically for my configuration, this guy's replaced the CPE, all the access points here. There's another access point in the shop. Shop's right down there. Now that one's not even necessary if all I cared about was coverage because I can still get excellent Wi-Fi signal strength in the shop, but I want another access point with a separate SSID 
that's directly connected to the switch that my um, NAS is on. So when I'm dumping footage, it has a direct path to the NAS. I'm able to saturate the full 600 megabits that my phone is capable of because I sync all these GoPros to my phone. All right, now normally this guy would be all you would need for all of this property. The problem is wall penetration, all right? So even when we get here to my last daughter's computer, uh, my phone, I'm still able to get around 100 megabits, but with her terrible Wi-Fi adapter, I'm only getting around 60 to 70 megabits. Now with the same Wi-Fi adapter, my other daughter and her gaming computer right here, she's able to only get about 130 megabit with the same Wi-Fi. So I just think it's that terrible TP-Link Wi-Fi adapter. It's supposedly AC 1200, but only has one um, 2.5, one 5 gigahertz antenna in the same housing right next to each other. They need Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 7 capable um, Wi-Fi adapter. I'm probably gonna get them each one of these like little octopus look, looking things and then if that doesn't help anymore, I might run a dedicated connection to this daughter's computer because this cable here runs, goes up into the crawl space into this PoE switch. All right, then that PoE switch and there I can run more access points in the future if I decide I want faster speed. But again, the coverage in there is excellent. Um, and then it comes out and it feeds this CPE. If you want to check out the video on that, check it out. Just don't buy it. It's a piece of crap. But for this application, it works. So that jumps going to there. All right, so the audio was a little messed up here, so I'm gonna do a voiceover. So basically the CPE has an ethernet cable, the one here on the wooden pole that runs underground all the way to the cabin where we have another Mighty X1 access point. And that little Mighty um, Wavelink access point could give a signal all the way up to the tree line. That's a really good access point. Now, what I really would like to do is tranch another cable from here 200 feet out and put another one of those access points out there in the field. And then we would literally have the entire 130 acres here covered in Wi-Fi. But that's really unnecessary as I have unlimited 5G and there is good cell phone service out here. So realistically, the Wi-Fi out this way is more for the, that cabin and just as a flex because I can. Now, while I have gone to a very premium consumer grade Wi-Fi solution, I did used to have an enterprise or at least an entry level enterprise level solution with my TP-Link Omara. But I honestly don't miss it. A lot of the extra features and stuff I didn't use. Now, I do still use the dashboard for my clients devices, but I don't need to manage my devices through a dashboard. I don't need all that linear control. I have a separate access point for the shop with direct access to the NAS and I have a separate access point for the house and for the cabin that use the same SSID so you can float around the property and still have excellent Wi-Fi coverage. All right, so since I don't have a dashboard, what I've done is each access point UI has been pinned down here. So if I go to the house Wi-Fi, that'll open up the big aerial hd9s and then the tech shack one again opens up the access for that one and then of course if i go down to the cabin wi-fi it's just gonna open another portal here with a different ip address because they have the same access point so they look the same um this one does not have an app because it is just an access point, repeater, mesh, but because this can also act as a router and has more features, you can download a full app to control it. But all of them are in access point mode. As I said, I am using um, OpenSense as my router. Wi-Fi has been excellent. Like I can't complain about anything. And again, the most expensive point, um, access point was sent to me for free as a review sample. So I can't really complain there either. But that is it for this low quality video. I will see you guys in the next one.